I started shooting photos when I was about 16 years old on my dad's camera. I shot film on that for a while with like a 50 millimeter lens. And then when I realized that I liked it, I went and purchased my first digital camera, which was a Canon Digital Rebel, the original Digital Rebel. I'm old. I've stuck with Canon gear for my entire 15 year career as a photographer. Canon has been with me through so many shoots, through so many photography experiences. I literally learned everything on Canon cameras. I had the original Digital Rebel, and then I sold that for a 30D, and then I sold that for the 5D Mark II, and later upgraded that to the 5D Mark III, which is where we were about five months ago. I decided to give up my Canon gear and switch entirely to Sony. <laughs> and then I realized that I just like never followed up. Like I just never, like I said I was gonna do a review and I didn't do it. And I said I was gonna give you my thoughts and I just didn't. Why are you switching to Sony? Your photos are gonna look like shit. And some people said your videos are gonna look like shit too, but fun fact, our videos have always been on Sony. <laughs> so. So it's been five months. I've completely switched to Sony. Glass, bodies. Do I have any regrets? Have to stay tuned and find out. I will preface this video by saying that the brand of camera you shoot on does not define who you are as a photographer and what your skills are. It's what you do with that camera gear that counts. Also, this video is not sponsored or endorsed in any way by Sony. All of the Sony gear that I'm talking about in this video, I paid for. So if I get any product shill, Sony shill comments, you just don't, just like leave. Let's talk about why I made the switch in the first place because it's hard to do why would you do it? You're invested in this gear. You know the gear like the back of your hand. You have all the lenses. When we started this YouTube channel about six months in, we picked up the Sony a7S II with a 16 to 35 for video. And the reason why we got Sony to begin with was because they had features, video features that we wanted that other cameras just did not have, including non-cropped 4K, 1080, 60 FPS and 120 FPS, S-Log2, it was full frame mirrorless and small. So over time, we we're vlogging with the a7S II and we're really liking it. Beast in low light, it's so good in low light. Autofocus, meh, not so great. But we also had the 5D Mark III, which was my photo camera. And we had a slew of Canon lenses as well. So we had these intentions of using an adapter to adapt the Canon lenses on Sony because we figured, hey, we can get by with manual focus for some of these specialty lenses if we're not vlogging. Somebody's always gonna be behind the camera, so manual focus isn't really a big deal. And that was fine and dandy in, in theory, and it was okay sometimes in practice, but when we moved to Buffalo and we started a secondary vlog channel, which unfortunately didn't really work out, that situation, I really needed a reliable autofocus. It was such a fast paced environment. There's no do-overs. Everything had to be quick and quick and go, 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 and like run and gun. And so autofocus was necessary. We ended up picking up the Sony 24-70 F2.8 and then never really adapted any of our lenses again. And I'm not an experienced focus puller. I, I'm a, I come from a photography background. Um, pulling focus for videos is just not, I'm not good at it, I'm not experienced at it. As time went on and as this channel started to grow, um, we found we needed a secondary video camera, especially when Chris and I were traveling separately and both making videos, we needed a second camera. So we picked up the Sony a6400, which is a crop body camera and the 10 to 18 millimeter lens because it's nice and wide, great for vlogging. And that camera is like really compact. That camera slowly became our main shooter. And so we started to get really invested in, in Sony because the autofocus was improving. They made some upgrades to their color. So all this time I had this like, 5D Mark III with a full slew of lenses that I just used for photography. So every time we went on a trip or we went anywhere, I was carrying around two full kits, an entire video kit and an entire photo kit. And there were times where we would go on trips where we'd have to make a sacrifice and decide, is this a photo trip or a video trip? It started to affect creativity and the things that we were making. And when we did the Cold Island series, which I'll link up here, that was like the final straw that just was kind of like, this is just too much because we had an entire backpack full of video camera gear to shoot that dock. And then we had an entire backpack of photo gear because we wanted to shoot photos of everything. Some of you might say, well, why don't you just shoot photos on your Sony? Um, as you may or may not know, the Sony a7S II is primarily a video camera. The sensor is lower resolution. Now the pixels are really big, so it's better on low light, but it's like a 12 megapixel camera. I wanted to shoot high resolution photos in case I wanted to print them and it was just time to consolidate. That is the reason why I switched and picked up the A7R Mark IV to replace my 5D Mark III 
as a photo camera. Now, I did reach out to you guys on Instagram and I asked if you guys had any questions about us switching from Sony to Canon and I did see a lot of the same questions. So we're gonna touch on some of them in this video, but we've answered a lot of the main pressing ones in our latest podcast. So that is linked in the description box if you wanna listen. We kind of deep dive into all those juicy questions about color science and menus, autofocus, um, and things like that. So if you wanna check it out, description box, tuxedo time if you didn't know. We do have a podcast. Why didn't you pick the a7 III? And the reason why I got the a7R4 is because built as more of a photo camera, I wanted a photo camera specifically to replace my 5D Mark III. We already had the a7S II and the 6400, which was serving our video needs. So I just wanted something that was gonna do heavy lifting on the photo side, and the a7R Mark IV was built for that. Another question I saw pop up a ton, especially in that video, which I'll link up here about when we we're deciding to switch to Sony is why not the EOS R? Some of you guys were shocked and offended that I didn't give the EOS R a chance. The reason why I didn't consider the EOS R is because I wanted to consolidate the kit. I wanted one brand in the bag and I really like Sony for video and it was just easier at this point to go Sony for photos instead of switching our entire video workflow over to Canon. And now I have one bag. I have one, one camera bag that holds all of it. <laughs> It's amazing. But the color science. I see this whole thing about the color science all the time, that Canon has better color science or that Sony's color science is shit. Do you know what color science actually is? Here's the thing. The cameras, they look different. Is one better than the other? I don't think so. I think they're just different and I think it depends on what you're used to. If you know how to manipulate color and Lightroom, then you can make your Sony photos look like Canon photos and vice versa. So while yes, Canon does have beautiful colors, there's nothing wrong with Sony colors. And in fact, the files still process lovely. And the only thing that I've had to change is just adjusting the presets that I built to work on the Sony files to make sure that the skin tones look correct. And I did notice one person who said, now your videos are gonna look like shit because you've switched and Sony has shitty color. And I'd like to say to that person, we've been shooting on Sony this entire time. So if you like her color, I think that speaks for itself. Menus, I see a lot of people complain about menus. Again, deep dive on the podcast about this. The menus, yes, they're complex, they're in depth, there are a lot of them. However, I do not think they're shit. They're just a little bit confusing at first. When you have a new camera, you switch to a new camera. Sometimes you have to dedicate some time to learning how your camera works. The menus, yes, they look different than on Canon. However, I did switch on my Canon right before I sent it to my dad. And the menus were just as confusing as when I switched to Sony the first time. So I think it's all about what you're used to, but I don't think Sony menus are shitty, but they are complicated. So if you are gonna switch, take some time to learn how to use them. Raw file size. Are the raw files big out of the A7R Mark IV? Are the raw files big out of the A7R Mark IV? Yes, they're massive. Am I having trouble with storage? No, because I'm set up, I have like two RAID towers with like 48 terabytes. Yeah, the hard drives are gonna fill up fast because we're creating every single week. We're shooting a lot of stuff every single week. Now, you can shoot compressed raw, but like what's the point of having that camera if you're gonna shoot compressed raw? I do find that Lightroom legs a little bit with these files because they're so big and my computer is from 2013 and she's a senior citizen, so she's struggling, but she struggles with Chrome and everything. It might be time to upgrade my computer. Image quality, I'm loving the image quality out of this camera. The shots are crisp, the autofocus is incredible. And we talk more in depth about focus in the podcast and kind of comparing that to what I was used to with the Canon camera. The eye autofocus on the A7R Mark IV is just insane. Really happy with the quality. Uh, haven't done a lot of low light tests and I think that's a little bit subjective depending on you know how you're shooting and what settings you're shooting and what types of nighttime sh shots you're doing. Oh, by the way, we are. this whole video has been shot on the A7R Mark IV. We'll talk about that in a second. User experience of the A7R Mark IV, it's not much different than the A7, S2, honestly, it took me a bit of time to set the camera up and set the buttons up to where it was a bit more familiar, similar to what my 5D Mark III was like, making sure my custom buttons were set up. I have that all dialed in now, so it takes a bit of time to get to know your camera, especially when you're switching. But so far, the user experience has been really good. The camera is smaller and lighter, which I was worried about because I like the chunkiness of the 5D, but in fact, it's actually easier to shoot with because I'm very weak. I should start lifting weights. I will say though, the one thing about the user experience that I, I'm not in love with is 
Ugh. This is just mirrorless cameras in general. I don't like the digital viewfinder. I like to see the subject through the lens. And so having that digital viewfinder just is just the only thing for me that's like a bit of a drag that I miss. It's not a DSLR, it's a mirrorless camera. So I just have to get used to that. The screen is really nice and bright and sharp and I love the way it looks in the back of the camera, which makes it a little more enjoyable to shoot with. Been very happy with it for photos so far. Um, I only recently started playing with it for video and while this camera is not a video dedicated camera, it can shoot video, but it is fantastic. The eye tracking autofocus is amazing compared to the focusing on the A7S II system, which is, is old, that camera's like from 2015. This camera just outperforms in terms of focus. So for a studio shot like this, it's really good. We shot some B-roll in a vlog, which you'll see either this Sunday or next Sunday with that camera. And I was really happy with the results. I haven't done any ex extensive testing on the video capabilities of this camera, but I am pleased with it so far and we'll probably continue using it for shots like this. So do I have any regrets? Well, no, I don't. I love having a light kit. I love being able to fit the entire kit in the bag. I love having every camera that I own match. I love having every camera that I own shoot the same modes, the same log. Yeah, the only thing I really miss from my Canon camera is, you know, being able to see through the, through the lens, um, seeing real life through the lens, I miss that. I miss being able to take a photo while I'm recording video. Now, not that we recorded it. There's probably one video on this channel that was shot on the 5D Mark III, but I do miss being able to shoot a photo while recording video, even though it puts a glitch in the video, it's kind of nice to have that option. As I mentioned, I reached out to you guys on Instagram for questions. There were a ton of them. We've answered most of them in the podcast. So if you want to check it out, it's linked in the description box. One of the questions I got is, can I have your old Canon camera? And the answer is no, you cannot. I gave it to my father. He's been, shooting photos. He actually used to be a photographer and has been getting back into it and misses the look that the old 35 millimeter cameras have. So I thought that maybe he would like the 5D Mark III. This video wasn't meant to shit on any camera brands at all. Would I recommend Canon? 100%. Would I recommend them for photography? Yes. For video? Yes. Sony just works for our workflow right now. Will we be back to Canon? I don't think so. Right now we're with, we're with Sony. I'm excited to see what they're pushing out. I know with the EOS R5 coming out, a lot of you guys have been asking if we're gonna switch now and we're not, but I am excited to see what that camera is gonna be all about. And it just means that the camera industry is just growing and pushing and we're gonna see more competitive cameras coming out. So not really a review, kind of just my experiences um, with uh, switching camera brands, cause it's kind of hard, you know, I'm a sentimental person. I really like Canon. I used Canon for 15 years, so it was hard for me to switch entirely, but I think I made the right decision. Another new little studio setup, trying this setup out for a new film we're making. Chris and I are working on a short film, which will be premiering on this YouTube channel early July. And it's something that means a lot to us. I've been meaning to make a video like this for some time, and it just felt like the right time Actually, we started this film in February and are net just now kind of starting to finish it. So uh, really excited. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. This will probably be the setup for one of the shots. So I'm just kind of testing it out. So with that said, I got to go get a glass of water because I've been talking loud and a lot because I don't stop talking ever. Thank you guys so much for listening. And this is not a podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. See you on the next one. I, I need my hair dyed so bad. And I'm considering going back to brown. Haven't been brown in about six years. A little nervous.